Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk about art and science of improving experiences. My name is Luisa. And I am Namrata. And we will lead this session for you together. Isn't that awesome? So you're getting two speakers in the time of one. As you can see on this slide, I started my, my career at uh, Electrolux, where I spent nine years. And then I switched to agency side, where I worked at Precise Digital. And uh, I started my career at Understatement, uh, moving to Buddy Company, which was a startup. And then I joined uh, Tele2, uh, where I met Luisa, and it was never looking back. We loved each working with each other so much that we continued our journey to our current employer, uh, Leo Vegas. Yeah, and we're recording from Leo today. So what we're going to cover in the next 20 minutes is what the design means to us. We will talk about key functions critical for conversion rate optimization program. And Namrata will walk you through challenges that designers face when trying to be data driven. So what is design to me? For sure, it's a practical thing, not just a pretty thing. So let me show you an example of what I mean by that. At uh, our Tele2 office, uh, we had this really nice working nook. And whenever meeting rooms were booked, and they were often fully booked, uh, we would sit there and have uh, more informal meetings. So what do you think is bad about this design? Well, each time we try to sit or stand up after a chat, we would hit our head against the lamp. So the lamps were basically uh, installed too low. So this is exactly what the design should not be. And moving closer to our digital domain, uh, we can also find some examples, unfortunately, of what the design should not look like, like this beauty here. Or if we look at this gorgeous date picker, I wonder how long it will take you to actually pick your date from here. Or the Swedish university website where to navigate the order of universities, it changes every time you click on it. And we don't have to look too far for to find bad examples. Being self-critical, we can look at uh, Tele2's previous website where consumers were telling us why it doesn't work for them. What do you think is missing on this broadband category page? Well, the offering. Consumers were complaining that they want to see the prices instead of being shown this bottleneck of an inside out approach as in telecom, to be able to say which service a um, provider can offer, they need an address to see which network you're connected to. But however, this is a telecom problem. It's not a consumer problem. The word design is often misunderstood. It is typically mistaken for making something look nice, but at its core, design gives shape to ideas, makes them real. In other words, design is rendering of intent. As Jared Poole, prominent designer and founder of Design School Center Center said, uh, that is why lack of uh, value can cheapen the perception of design. Make sure that you know what the purpose of each element and page is and then build around its function. We need design, not just as a service. We need to make our products beautiful, but to discover the right product. And we can do it based on all our data points we have about our product to use. Design without data is like lipstick on a pig. Hi, this is Romo Santiago, founder of Experiment Nation. To celebrate our fifth anniversary, we are holding weekly giveaways until November 29th. Prizes include books, free consultation services, and even a t-shirt. To enter, simply join Experiment Nation Slack and fill out the entry form that can be found in the description or through the QR code on the screen. Now back to the session. And data is not maths. It's actionable insights and proofs of what users want, need, and do on our websites or apps. Uh, an example of a data point can be a quote from consumers' feedback from one, one of our surveys or input given during usability testing. So it's not always your Google Analytics data. All these qualitative and quantitative clues uh, have value and can be used and should be used in consideration when designing or improving uh, a product or a service. Uh, and this is when 
design is entering this experimentation area. And CRO, conversion rate optimization, is a cross-field discipline that could be a part of any um, side of the organization. So when I worked at Electrolux, CRO was a part of marketing. Uh, at Tele2, CRO was part of analytics. Here, um, CRO at Leo is a part of product organization, but it used to, in fact, be a part of design function. Um, so regardless where this team sits in your organization, you will need to collaborate with all these functions. And one of the most important stakeholders are designers. They can be your allies, ambassadors to spread experimentation culture in the organization, enabling data-driven decision-making. And I feel that on these conferences, we often talk about the relationship between the CRO team and the developers, but we don't talk often enough about this important relationship that is between CRO and the design team. Um, and this is a very important function. For any experimentation program, there are these core functions that you need to have or should have. Uh, you have the analyst, the statistical experts, then the creative team, so designers and copywriters that know inside out the brand perception and brand tonality. Uh, then we have the developers that are making a well-rounded idea come to life by coding it, so taking the hypothesis and bringing it to life, and product owners that see entire roadmap of the product development, and they are very often uh, heavily involved in prioritization. And you need all these functions for experimentation machine to run. And run it does. Uh, what I like about uh, this um, Visualiza visualization from Erin uh, compared to, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen many other versions of experimentation process visual, but what I like about Erin's one is that she focuses on this very important creation uh, stage that is critical when it comes to experimentation. In my experience working as a designer, I've stumbled upon various uh, challenges. Uh, for being data-driven. Data is often overwhelming. It is really difficult to interpret, especially for designers. And of course, there is Hippo, my favorite one, which is highest paid person's opinion. And uh, designers often get overwhelmed with the amount of impressions and data points they get. It gets tough for designers to focus where to look and more importantly, what to look. Uh, since most designers are not uh, trained in analytics, it can be challenging for them to understand and interpret the data. CRO really helps uh, interpretation uh, and prioritization for the data. And that is uh, a process that comes really handy for us. Mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, there are many prioritization frameworks that uh, you've recommended, such as ICE, CXL, or PIE. At Leo Vegas, we use a version called ICE, uh, which, but we have included, uh, we call it RICE, mm -hmm. where we've included uh, REACH as well. Yeah. And finally, regardless of designers' best intents and working with insights, we often face the other more senior stakeholders in the room and they have strong opinions and about design that's being presented and so called HIPPOs, the highest paid person's opinion. We talked about challenges that designers face, but what can be the solutions uh, for these challenges? Having the right tools in the place, the right process, and using the right research methodologies can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the tools. So you said that the tools are critical, um, and particularly tools with easy user interface that designers and other functions can use. Um, I think for experimentation, these are the most important tools to have in place. So that's your web analytics measurement tool, your experimentation tool, behavior analysis tool, voice of consumer, and finally program management, which I have seen making a lot of uh, positive difference in documentation of your program. And what is interesting is uh, there was a study from uh, Optimizely where they said that if a business has measurement tool, the success of the hypothesis that are based on using insights from that tool have 32% higher chance of success. 
And then if the, if the organization has both measurement and behavior analysis tool, you can see on the bottom here that then the su success rate of those hypotheses is 48% higher. So it is really important and critical to, um, to have the right tools in place. And uh, there are many different ways in understanding user behavior on your website on or, or app. Uh, so there's this Trinity approach from Avinash Kaushnik that has these three different elements to it. So let's look at uh, different parts of that. Within outcomes, this is where we have our Google Analytics, our Amplitudes, our Adobe Analytics. This is where we measure sessions, uh, clicks, orders, uh, revenue, conversion rates. We very often complement this what, the basic behavior on the website, with uh, the why from our uh, content scores, hot jars, decibels, and so forth. Uh, this is where we measure clink density. Uh, we have heat maps and session recordings. And finally, we have the research area, my favorite. This is where we have A-B Tasty, Chameleon, Optimizely. Uh, this is where we have experimentation as well, voice of consumer with get feedback and survey tools. Um, and if you only have the budget for one of these tools, that is absolutely fine. Just make sure that you use the insights that you have and you act on them. And all these different experience methodologies are decked against one single purpose. And that is to get companies to listen to the voice of the customer. And based on your experience, Namrata, which is uh, your favorite tool? Well, amongst the ones that I have used, I feel Airtable and Content Square uh, really make a mark. Content Square, I really like their Chrome plugin that mm -hmm. they have. It makes it so easy to use. And uh, with Airtable, I feel it's like one stop uh, for all qualitative and quantitative documentation. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It really makes a difference when you have the right tools. So let us look at the process. Heat meets uh, combined with conversion reviews are a great start to include cross-functional team opinions instead of overshadowing with hippos. Uh, both the processes really help gather and align both qualitative and quantitative data. And maybe we should mention, so heat meets are like brainstorming sessions because there are many different names out there. And conversion reviews is basically really diving deep into a particular flow on your website. So it's type of analysis that one runs. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And along with that, uh, there could be like several team gatherings. So we have weekly CRO sync where we have the cross-functional team. We have the monthly CRO review where it's a uh, more wider audience and the stakeholders get to uh, understand and uh, align with what we are doing. And my favorite one, which is the cross-functional sharing session mm -hmm. where uh, people who have used these tools share what they've done and get feedback from each other. And it's so inspiring and motivating for others who are reluctant or hesitant to use. Mm. Uh, it really inspires them to use it even more. And I think these ceremonies are really important in driving experimentation culture at the company. And uh, there are many different research methodologies out there and the many companies, um, usability studies are handled by the design team. And that was the case at Cella 2 and it is the case uh, here at Leo Vegas. Uh, and depending on which research method you choose uh, and you use, the outcome might be more qualitative focus or quantitative focus. Um, so you might use a competitor benchmark, you might check out what your competitors are doing. Um, you should definitely ask your consumers for their opinions using voice of consumer surveys on websites or apps. Um, and uh, the least what you can do if you cannot do A-B testing is to look at the before and after comparison of your uh, data and your measurement platform. But the far most common research methodology is A-B testing. Uh, and we have actually prepared a couple of test examples for you uh, based on the insights from different research methodologies. So let's uh, dive into that. Uh, one hypothesis uh, was created based on insight from usability testing. Uh, one was based on feedback from consumer from our surveys on the web. And then one came from um, user behavior insight and also competitor benchmark. So let's take a look. 
Uh, looking at our first example, uh, we noticed when communicating a promotion on our 15 gigabytes um, tier that consumers didn't really like how we communicated that promotion. Uh, they preferred the strike true version that you see in the variation here. So we decided to test it out. And we actually ran this test three times. So we learned a lot from this. Uh, we started just on product listing page, as you see here, and the promotion was running for eight days. So that was the duration that we could run the test for. Um, but as you can see, this was not significant. So um, we ran the test again, and here we learned from customer feedback that uh, the experience wasn't uh, consistent for them. So we this time made sure that we uh, introduced the change also on product detail page, on price summary, and the confirmation page. And at the time, we were using Google Optimize for it. We were in the progression. For those of you that uh, went through that, know what that means. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, encouraged by the positive results, uh, we uh, ran the test again um, for the third time in Chameleon. And we could see this time um, that this uh, specific change increased our transactions in this particular tier by 9%. So it was a really positive and this time reliable uh, result um, that, that we were happy with. So sometimes it's worth testing the same hypothesis three times. But let, let's look at another test. Uh, so this one was based on our user feedback uh, that we did on our uh, website survey, which mm -hmm. was voice of consumer. And uh, we wanted to improve our sales for broadband. And we had a lot of comments from users saying that, uh, how much does the broadband cost? How do I know uh, the price or what is the price? Mm -hmm. And it was like uh, all over uh, our uh, voice of consumer surveys. And so that's when we tested with a variant where we introduced the prices and uh, we could see the results significantly increased uh, our con transactions by 12.2%. Mm. And uh, there were positive signs for overall improvement within the funnel. So even though we had 2.3% uh, less traffic going on the product detail pages, more were starting checkout mm. and uh, more transact. So people drop off at the product uh, detail page and conversion rate improved from 1.28% to 1.43%. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, that traffic to product detail page is not everything. If you look at the full funnel, that's where the where the money lies. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, this one is also based on our user behavior data. So we had a lot of screen recordings and we had a lot of uh, consumer observation where we saw the users were clicking on uh, the pho photographs. Uh, and uh, to get through the next page, but then we introduced the whole block to be clickable. And that's when we saw an increase of 8% in traffic to the next uh, uh, page. Yeah, so this should be, I think, like a UX standard. So don't just make the CTA clickable, make sure your entire product card is clickable, particularly on mobile. Yeah, it's one of my favorite because it was like so obvious when it came to user experience and it felt mm. like this is, how can we miss this? Mm. So that uh, actually concludes our presentation about the art, so design and science, so data or improving uh, websites. And uh, we talked about some of the challenges. We talked about solutions um, and we hope that you enjoyed it. Um, remember that the sweet spot is when these come together at the same time, taking under consideration the business prioritization. So let's stay in touch and continue the conversation. Uh, thank you very much for listening to us today. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi, this is Romo Santiago, founder of Experiment Nation. To celebrate our fifth anniversary, we are holding weekly giveaways until November 29th. Prizes include books, free consultation services, and even a t-shirt. To enter, simply join Experiment Nation Slack and fill out the entry form that can be found in the description or through the QR code on the screen. Now back to the session.